In today's lecture, we will see the public and private IPv4 addresses. As usual, we will start the session with the outcomes. In today's lecture, we have two outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one. We will know about the public and private IPv4 addresses. And outcome number two, we will know the special use IPv4 addresses. We will start with what is a private IPv4 address. A private IPv4 address means it's private. It can be used locally. We are free to use the private IP address without getting approval from anybody. Early network design when global end-to-end -end connectivity was envisioned for communication with all internet hosts, intended that IP addresses be globally unique. However, it was found that this was not always necessary as private networks developed and public address space needed to be conserved. When we talk about the IPv4 addresses, the starting of the IPv4 address will be 0.0.0.0 and the last IPv4 address will be 255.255.255.255. In this range, we know we have various classes of IPv4 addresses. In the bulk range of IPv4 address, there are certain addresses that are named as private addresses. Why do we need private addresses? Because everyone is free to use private IP address for their device. That is, if I use a private address which is 10.10.10.1, anyone in the world can also use 10.10.10.1 for their device. The IP address that starts with 10 is an example IPv4 private address. Anyway, we are going to see that shortly. If I request a Google page, that is the computer which is having the IP address which is 10.10.10.1, this computer is requesting for a Google page. And many devices in the world can also use the same IP address which I am using. But if I request the Google page, only my computer is getting that. How my computer alone is getting that exact Google response which my device requested? When many computers are running with the same IP address like my computer is using. And that's the magic. The answer for this will be revealed shortly. But from point number one, we need to understand there are some IP addresses that are private IP addresses and the rest are public addresses where these public addresses must be unique throughout the world so that any device which is requesting for a page in the internet can be uniquely identified. And coming to point number two, computers not connected to the internet such as factory machines that communicate only with each other via TCP IP need not have globally unique IP addresses. Say there is a network and that network has some computers which is going to contact internally. For these computers which is going to have the internal communication, we can assign private IP address for these computers which is available in this factory. Anyway, that computer is not going to contact the external world which is the internet. So we can have some set of IP addresses that are the private IP addresses and these private addresses if it is assigned to a computer so that can participate in the local area network but not with the internet. Actually, these private IP addresses are reserved so as to make a communication internally because it need not contact the external network which may be the internet. But today, such private networks are widely used and typically connect to the internet with the technology Network Address Translation which is well known as NAT when needed. Say in my organization, I am using an IP address to my computer which is 10.10.10.1. Can I expect that nobody in the world to use 10.10.10.1 for their device? I can't expect like that because anyone can use their private set of IP addresses. Private IP addresses can be used by anybody else. Say if my computer is requesting a Google page, only my computer is getting that response. Let's assume my computer is using the IP address 10.10.10.1. And this IP address can be assigned to many devices in the world. If my computer is requesting for a Google page and the response is given to my computer alone, but not to other computers which are having the same IP address like my computer. How my computer alone is getting this? And this magic is done by the proxy server or the routers that are enabled with NAT technology, that is network address translation. The proxy servers or the routers that are enabled with NAT, what they does, you know, they will simply map the private IP addresses to public IP addresses 
in the internet it will be unique so in the example we have taken we know the computer is 10.10.10.1 once the request goes out of the first router we are hitting that is our default gateway which is enabled with nat it removes that private ip addresses and it puts its source ip address which is the public address so that this router will be uniquely identified throughout the world when the reply comes to this router this router knows which local area network has requested this packet so it replaces that exactly and gives that data to the original sender which has requested the data internally these private ip addresses are known once the data is coming out of the first router that network is hitting where that router must be nat enabled router or we can use a proxy server where this nat enabled router or the proxy server will map the private ip addresses to its public ip address so this nat enabled router or the proxy server will maintain a table data structure so that it keeps track of which device is requesting for the page because these private ip addresses are not going to be revealed outside the network where these public ip addresses are unique throughout the world let's now see what are the various private ip addresses hosts that do not require access to the internet can use private addresses say 10.0.0.02 10.255.255.255 it means this is a very big network so any ip address that starts with 10 will be a private ip address so these private ip addresses are not recognized in the internet So this IP address can be used to establish an internal communication in the organization. But you may be asking a computer which is using this IP address is able to get connected to the internet. That is possible because of the NAT technology or the proxy server concept. So the network that is 10.0.0.0/8 is a private IP address. So this is belonging to class A. We have a class B private IP address which is 172.16.0.0 to 172.31.255.255 so we can't say that anything that starts with 172 will be a private ip address please note here it is 172.16 to 172.31 so 172.16.0.0 is the network address what is the network address the starting address in the network is the network address if you note here we are using slash 12 In classful world, we have seen only slash eight, slash sixteen, and slash twenty-four. But here we are seeing a new term called slash twelve. We will be dealing about this elaborately in the classless addressing part. And we have a private IP address range in class C also, which is one ninety-two dot one sixty-eight dot zero dot zero to one ninety-two dot one sixty-eight dot two five five dot two five five. So the network address is one ninety-two dot one sixty-eight dot zero dot zero slash sixteen. It means Anything that starts with 192.168/16 means it's two octets, right? So these two octets should match. So anything that starts with 192.168 will be belonging to this network. It is a private IP address. So these private IP addresses do not require access to the internet. So if you don't use a NAT technology or proxy server in your network, and if you use this IP address to your device, even if you try to connect to the internet. your device will not be recognized in the internet you will not get internet connectivity because these private ip addresses are blocked by the internet the routers in the internet will not forward your requests so the aforementioned are the three non overlapping ranges of ipv4 addresses for private networks are reserved let's now see the special use ipv4 address there are many special use ipv4 addresses the first address we would like to address is the network and broadcast addresses we know in every network the first address and the last address are not used so we can't assign those ip addresses to the host we have already seen this elaborately in the classful addressing so within each network the first and the last addresses cannot be assigned to the host because the first address is the network address and the last address is the broadcast address in a network if we have n ip addresses we will always subtract two because of this reason only and coming to the second special use ipv4 address is the loopback address so which is 127.0.0.1 it is a special address that hosts use to direct traffic to themselves that is if you use ping 127.0.0.1 in your computer your host will be forwarding the traffic to itself normally you will get a reply if you give ping 127.0.0.1 because it is going to direct the traffic to itself So this is the loopback address range. You just go and try in your computer. You try ping 127.0.0.1. 
you will normally get a reply. And coming to the next one, which is the link local address, which is 169.254.0.0 to 169.254.255.255. So these addresses we cannot use because they are automatically assigned to the local host. So when we talk about the dynamic host configuration protocol, which is DHCP, I will tell you what is this IP address. For time being, these are the link local addresses. And then we have the testnet addresses, which is 192.0.2.0 to 192.0.2.255. It is set aside for teaching and learning purposes. It is used in the documentation and network examples. And the final special use IPv4 address is the class E address. We know class E is for experimental purpose. So the experimental addresses, which is 240.0.0.0 to 255.255.255.254. They are listed as the reserved address. If you note here, it is 255.255.255.254 because we have already seen all 255 is a broadcast address. So in a nutshell, private IP address is used to communicate within the same network. Using private IP address, the data or information can be sent or received within the same network. In case if you want to make your private network to communicate with the internet, you need to bring in a proxy server or enable NAT in your network. And these private IP addresses are mapped to public IP addresses and these public IP addresses will be unique throughout the world. Public IP address is used to communicate outside the network. And public IP address is basically assigned by the internet service provider, simply ISP. Just like that, we can't use this public IP address because we need to get this public IP address from the internet service provider. Maybe we need to pay and get an IP address in order to establish the communication with the internet. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.